he's an incredible man. What a visionary. What a, what a, what a fabulously creative person. Um, wow. He knew what he wanted to do, and he had well over a year pre-production to get going on it. But when they were about three or four weeks away, Sylvia Tibet called my mentor, Sandy Howard, up and said, I need you to come in and produce this movie. We, we're we're going to be way over budget the way things are going here. And uh, and, and Sandy said, you've you got to hire board chairs because you can't afford me, and, he, and you could probably make a deal with him. At the time, I was still doing commercials, so I was in the middle of doing um, a James Bond commercial for... For, for Datsun Nissan out of Japan. They had sent a Japanese crew over, and we were doing high falls off the Biltmore Hotel downtown. What an amazing crew, these Japanese. And in, in order to keep the crazy hours that their fascist uh, bosses wanted them to keep, they had wake-up pills. I mean, they literally would put them on their shoulder, and then as they start to fall asleep, they'd take another wake-up pill, and these go pills, and, and it was keeping them going. We were doing these high-speed chases. They were just building the 210 freeway at the time, and we got the, the, the rights to, to go right on it because it wasn't operating yet. And we were doing these crazy car chases and passes and everything, and I get this phone call. It's the day before Thanksgiving. And Silvio says, I need you on the Beastmaster immediately. You have to come. I said, well, I'm going to be wrapped out of here naturally on Friday. I can't imagine you're working on Thanksgiving. Why don't I just start on Monday and, and everything, it'll just work. Okay, but we need you right away. So it's my first day on the set on Beastmaster, and it's just pouring down rain. And I haven't been at work 15 minutes, and the transpo guy comes in, and he says, uh, it's a quagmire out in Simi Valley. We, we can't move anything across all of the mud. So we have a pyramid that's been built. We can't move any more art direction or supplies to them. We can't move people to them. We can't get anything out. We're, we're down. And I said, well, what's the solution? He said, well, everybody nixed the solution before you started. I said, well, just tell me what the solution is. The solution is we build a road out of gravel. We just gravel in for two miles. So what's the cost? Like $40,000. Well, now they brought me on because the show's over budget. 15 minutes on the show, I send it $40,000 over budget. I approved the expenditure. I said, build the road. Keep the show moving. Silvio comes over and he's... What, are you crazy? Why are we doing? What are we doing? And I said, Sylvia, I just got here. It's a 12-week schedule. Let me, I'm Captain Budget, let me figure this out. Just, I haven't read the script yet. I, all I know is if you can't work, you can't work. So let me get them working, and while they're working, let me figure it out. So now I'm looking at the board, and I'm about six hours into my first day, and I'm thinking things like, now, this scene says that a ferret crawls up a rope. You know, and I'm looking and I'm reading. There are no actors in this scene. This is scheduled on the second day of photography. I said, do we mean to have 70 people, 12 animal handlers, 10 lions, and we're watching a ferret climb up a rope? So who put this board together? This is, this is the craziest schedule I've ever seen in my life. I said, have they ever shot a movie? And, and, I, and, and I, Silvio, I promise you, by the end of this week, I'm going to have a 10-week schedule and then a second unit schedule. The cost of your second unit is going to be a fraction of the cost of your first unit. Your first unit's running about $300,000 a week. You're $200,000 over budget. I just put you $40,000 over budget. I'm going to take two weeks off, so I'm going to save $500,000. That's going to reimburse the 240, and it's going to give me a quarter of a million dollars to shoot two weeks a second unit. By the end of the month, I'll have that figured out. Let's just take it one day at a time. Now I come back from lunch, and there's John Alcott. Yeah? You have to talk to the director. Why? I, I don't particularly like that. <laughs> well, I've been asking him since I've been on if I could have a shot list. Well, he hasn't given me one. I said, why not? I don't believe he knows how to make it. You're kidding me. So I go in and I meet Don Coscarelli and I draw a circle and I put a line across it. And I said, I don't mean to insult you, Mr. Coscarelli, but you could just tell me, where am I crossing the line? So what's that mean? I said, seriously. <laughs> seriously. So now I know Phantasm made a lot of money 
I know the distributors. I mean, I, I know people want to do Phantasm 2 II and 3 and 4 and want to be in business with you. And you're, you're like, I worked with John Carpenter and then there's you. And I'm thinking, you guys are leading the industry. How did you shoot Phantasm? Well, we, we pulled the camera equipment out on a one-day rental on a Friday, and then we'd use it Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and return it Monday night. So we'd get a four-day rental out of one day. I said, well, yeah, we all know that trick. That's fabulous, but tell me more. He says, well, we shot it over the course of eight months on weekends, and we'd edit it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, make a list of the shots that were missing, go back to the set, and then shoot those shots. And I said, and you'd get it on one weekend? He said, well, no, sometimes we'd have to go back to three or four times. I said, well, that's terrific. So then I go, and, and they've hired Roy Watts as the editor. Now, this is Harry Hausen's editor. And I meet with Roy, and I say, uh, Don sh shot Phantasm like this. <laughs> I think we need your help, Mr. Watts. Could you stop prepping and just handcuff yourself onto Mr. Coscarelli until we get through the end of the show. And if it means that you don't cut a foot until we get through the end of the show, that's fine with me if we can have shot lists every day. And I hired Roy to come on to Angel for the same reasons, so that we'd have a shot list every day. And what a great guy Roy Watts is. Now, John Alcott on that show also used no generator. So that means that when we shot at night, those campfires and torches, that was our light. 